Hello everyone. I am Dr. Mirza Athar Ali. Uh, I am a consultant radiation oncologist at uh, Medicover Cancer Institute, High Tech City, Hyderabad. Uh, today I am going to briefly talk about uh, importance of organ preservation in cancer management. So by definition, organ preservation is defined as uh, a treatment strategy or approach in which all the efforts are made uh, in order to spare the organ of origin of cancer. That means the treatment strategy or the treatment plan is defined in such a way that the organ which is affected by cancer is not sacrificed. It, uh, all efforts are made to spare that organ so that the functionality of that organ is preserved for that particular patient. One more important thing is this approach does not compromise the quality of uh, care and also the cure rates of the cancer. So what are the benefits of organ preservation in cancer? First and the foremost important is the psychological uh, effect on the patient. So by sparing the organ, uh, we are actually trying to avoid the negative impact of the loss of organ or the loss of function for that particular patient. That is the most important uh, benefit of uh, offering the organ preservation approach to a cancer patient. Second is the quality of life. So by preserving an organ, we are actually preserving the function of that organ for that particular patient. For example, uh, suppose a patient uh, whose profession is teaching, he is a teacher, he or she is a teacher and for that particular patient voice is an important function. So uh, suppose that that patient has got a laryngeal cancer or a vocal cord cancer and we adopt an approach, a treatment approach in which we preserve the larynx of that particular patient then we are actually preserving a very very important function for that particular patient which will actually improve the quality of life uh, of that patient. So that will definitely have a positive uh, psychological impact and also the quality of life will not degrade after the cancer treatment. The third important thing is the cosmesis or the look. So by preserving the organ uh, we actually maintain the look or the cosmesis uh, of that particular patient. For example, in a case of breast cancer, uh, many women would not uh, prefer to lose that organ for the cosmetic appearance. So by preserving uh, the organ of origin of cancer, which is uh, in question the breast, uh, we actually preserve the cosmesis and hence they will have a positive psychological impact. The fourth thing is the cure rate. So although we are preserving an organ uh, which is affected by cancer, the approach which we adopt does not compromise the cure rates. So with almost equally uh, cure rates, uh, we are actually able to preserve the organ with the, with the, same quali with the good quality of life and uh, without compromising the cure rates. Now uh, coming to what are the important sites where we can adopt this uh, organ preservation approach. So one thing which is very important to understand is that not all cancer sites are uh, amenable to or suitable for organ preservation. There are few important sites where we can adopt this organ preservation approach are number one laryngeal cancer. So early stage uh, vocal cord cancer or larynx cancers like T1, T2 or T3. Uh, in these cases we can actually uh, do an organ preservation approach by doing radiation and chemotherapy and avoiding surgery to treat such patients. So that is uh, the first example where uh, the cases are suitable for organ preservation. The third, ex second example is uh, esophageal cancer. So these days for squamous cell carcinoma of the esophagus uh, by actually offering patients uh, radiation and chemotherapy, so we call it as a concurrent chemo radiation, we can actually uh, make an attempt to preserve the organ. So basically what we do is we treat these patients with radiation and chemotherapy up front and then after the treatment completion we actually assess the response by doing a uh, scan and endoscopy and random biopsies. So patients who achieve complete response can be actually observed and these are the patients uh, who can be avoided from offering surgery which is the esophagectomy which is a very radical surgery. The third site is the breast cancer. So early stage breast cancers uh, can be considered for organ preservation in the form of breast conservation surgery. So in this approach basically the entire breast is not sacrificed uh, in the surgery. Only the lump is taken out uh, along with the regional nodal uh, clearance is done and uh, the organ is preserved and post surgery these patients would require actually adjuvant radiation. Uh, the fourth site is the uh, bladder cancer. So patients who are not suitable for 
radical cystectomy or uh, who are uh, uh, unfit because of their uh, comorbidities like uh, various medical conditions like diabetes, uh, hypertension, cardiac uh, uh, conditions uh, or patients who refuse surgery uh, for uh, removal of the bladder. These patients can be considered for organ preservation approach by uh, doing radiation and concurrent chemotherapy. So patients who get complete response with radiation and chemotherapy can be avoided with a radical surgery of cystectomy. Now other sites where uh, organ preservation can be adopted uh, includes prostate cancer and rectal cancer. So to conclude my talk, I would say that organ preservation approach is a very very important and upcoming field in the branch of oncology. By offering organ preservation, we are actually able to maintain the functionality of that organ. We are uh, able to maintain the quality of life of the patient. We are able to maintain the cosmesis for a particular patient and also the cure rates are comparable with any other modality of uh, treatments. So with this, I would like to conclude my talk. Thank you very much.